Our reading is from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, on page 1179 of the Church Bibles. Philippians 2, verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Labour 30s. Maybe something like, remember to take your National Trust card, or otherwise we will not be able to enjoy our day. Maybe some things like that. Those things are sort of necessities needed to have at certain times. Now, last week, we've been thinking that Paul called the church in Philippi to live lives worthy of God, and, and, and in doing that, to live united, to live humble and servant-hearted lives around one another. The book of Philippians, the letter to the Philippians, is really an encouragement of Paul to stand firm together in the gospel. And Paul, this we're going to see in these verses in chapter 2. If you've got your Bible, do have it open with you. We're going to see the motivation for being humble and servant-hearted. Paul is going to make that really clear. And it's something that they need not to forget, but to make sure they have with them. So as they humbly serve one another, which we saw last week in verses 1 to 4 of chapter 2, as they humbly serve one another, they are to make sure they are to, they are to make sure they have Christ's attitude with them. You we see that, don't we, in verse in verse 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, or as we heard in our reading, in our relationships with one another your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And so it's for us too. It's not just for a church in Philippi 2,000 years ago. It's a message for us too. If we are to humbly serve one another, we mustn't forget to, take, to have the attitude of Christ with us. And so what we're going to do in the next bit of time is just to think through two things. We're going to look closely at the example of Jesus because that's what Paul wants us to do. And then we're going to think as we go along how it informs our lives together as one another. And to do that, I've got a few things to help me. And the first thing I have with me, the first thing I want us to think about is that Christ's attitude is humble. And so I've got my helmet of humility here to remember that in order to have Christ's attitude, a bit like riding a bike, I need to wear it. This isn't my helmet, as you can tell. It doesn't fit my head. But we are to have the helmet of humility. So look with me, if you can, at verses 6 to 8, and we'll see that Christ's attitude is humble. I'm going to read it again because they're wonderful verses. Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Christ's attitude is humble, and to be humble means to not 
have or show any feelings of superiority. Now, if you're a Man City fan this morning, you might be tempted to not be humble. You might be superior. We've got one more game and the Champions League trophy is ours. It would be easy to be superior for Jack Grealish this morning, wouldn't it? But a humble mindset is to not be like that. And think about Jesus. Jesus had every reason to feel superior or to be superior. We read in verse 6 that he is in very nature God. But we see that God the Son doesn't use his godness to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing and was made in human likeness. Another translation says he emptied himself. So think, a bit, think about it a bit like this. Imagine you're the owner of a cafe. Let's call the cafe the Cornerstone Cafe. And you're the owner and you're going there for your favorite drink, the Mocha Chocka Waka Duda. It's your favorite drink. Now, imagine you're coming up to the cafe and there's a queue, a big queue. What should you do? What could you do? What could you do? Push in. That's the, that's the answer I'm looking for. We all thought it. Push in. I'm the owner. I can go in front. Mocha, chocolate, walk a doo please. With sprinkles. But humble attitude would be to join the back of the queue, wouldn't it? To not think of ourselves above the other people in the queue, not just because we're the owner. And that's what Jesus does. He is the owner of creation. But he humbles himself. He makes a choice. You may remember this um, photo coming up on screen now of David Beckham. Now, as David Beckham, you would think maybe he doesn't need to queue. Maybe we could get that on um, the... Yeah, maybe you think David Beckham doesn't need to queue. But do you, hands up if you remember that photo. It made, it made a lot of the news, didn't it? Because David Beckham, um, the, the news would say, humbled himself as he waited to pay his respects to the Queen, who was lying in state. David Beckham joined the queue. Now, he could have used the David Beckham card and said, well, I'm, you know, I don't want to cause a... A, a, a fuss. Could you let me in first? But he waited. He joined the queue. And so the helmet, the first thing I want us to see in these verses is that Jesus, who is very God, the creator of all, humbled himself. He didn't think of his superiority as something to be grasped, but emptied himself. And for us here at Holy Trinity, each, each week, as we gather during the week, we have a choice, don't we? We have a choice to put ourselves first or to put on the mindset of Christ, to put on the helmet of humility. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because often we can think of ourselves as being superior or I need to think about my needs first. But when we look to Jesus, we see that Jesus, our King and Lord of creation, humbled himself. So the first thing is, let's get our our helmets of humility on. The second thing, and here's my second item, is the rubber gloves. Now, I don't know what you think about when you see rubber gloves. But what I want us to think about when we see these is that Christ's attitude is servant-hearted. Because whenever I see someone wearing yellow marigolds, I think, cool, they're doing something that must be messy. They must be doing something that must be messy. And we see that Jesus did similar. Look with me at verses 7 to 8. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. A servant simply serves others. It's thinking of others before ourselves. Let me give you an example of this. Um, After the first service, often Jemima and others and me are thinking biscuits. And she's ready, like this. Three, two, one, biscuit go. Now, to serve others, to be a servant, is to be like Jill, who's in the cafe today. Jill's not eating the biscuits before we get there. 
Jill and her team are going to serve others. A servant is a one who serves others. And we have probably the best example, two examples of that in Christ. One I want us to see before we get to the cross is that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Before he died, Jesus washed his disciples' feet as a show and and tell really of what it is to care for others, to serve others, to not think of ourselves above others. Jesus, if you like, gets in with the mess and he serves. When we, when we see a need, let me give you another example. At our church family lunches, we often see the plates, uh, once we've eaten, go from this high to this high to this high to this high to this high because we've all enjoyed our food. Now, to see a need and to serve is to say, okay, there's some plates here. I see the marigolds. I see the washing up liquid. I'm going to wash up today. It's to see a need and to jump in. And that's what Jesus has done for us, isn't it? The need for creation, that he, the world that he made, was to save us, to rescue us from sin, and to bring us into relationship with him. Jesus could have stayed in heaven, but Jesus humbled himself and came to serve us and not be served. So here at Holy Trinity, how can we be servant-hearted? How can we think of others before ourselves? I think it it, it looks a bit like seeing a need, praying to God and acting on it. It could be simply as helping someone um, who's looking lost in the link afterwards. Maybe it's their first Sunday here and reaching out and serving them and saying, how are you? How can I help? It could be stepping into a tricky situation in someone's life and saying, how can I get alongside you? How can I be with you? How can I get in the mess alongside it could be, for example, we went to um, Keswick last year with, with the youth. It could be in the kids' work, getting alongside the kids and the youth, seeing that there's a need to disciple children and young people, and I want to jump in and help. It could be if we're children and young people here on a Sunday, not coming here uh, into our groups and sitting with our mates and just spending time with our mates, which might be fun and maybe even better, but to, to get alongside the new person to serve them, to love them, to think of others beyond ourselves. This is what Jesus did. And the last thing, I just need to borrow something from when I, is that the, the final thing that Jesus' attitude shows us is that it's costly. Christ's attitude is costly. And here, I've just uh, got um, Wenner's engagement ring. We see that the attitude that Christ has is costly. To give this away would be costly. And to give up heaven and the glory there, to humble himself, become obedient to death, even death on a cross, shows that Christ was willing to pay the ultimate cost, the ultimate penalty that our sins deserved by standing in our place. Jesus paid the greatest cost, by giving up his life so that we can be with him forever. The cross, if you like, is the crown of his humility. It's his picture, the picture we must see if we want to be like him, of humility, of servant-heartedness, and it's costly. Um, I, I want to show you a picture of the Brownlee brothers who were racing in the World Series in Mexico in 2016. Hopefully it will come up on the screen We see Johnny and Alistair. Johnny is on the right-hand side. Alistair is on the left. And Johnny was about 700 meters from the end. He was in first place, and he started to wobble. He's just doing a triathlon. I I like to watch triathlons from the sofa where it's safe. But he was wobbling. This is the third leg. He's, He's near the end, 700 meters from the finishing line. Now, if you were Alistair, his brother, and you're competitive, what would you do? What could you do? Run past him. Hey, see you later, brother. But what does Alistair do? He gets his arm over his shoulder and he carries him to the line. Well, he doesn't carry him to the line. He pushes him to the line and he shoves him over the line. If you get a chance, watch it on YouTube. It's a brilliant clip. And it shows a costly sacrifice made by Alistair for his brother Johnny. Alistair put Johnny first and threw him over the line. 
And this is what Christ does for us. It's the better picture, the best picture, where Christ came from heaven to earth, became obedient to death, even death on a cross, so that we can cross the eternity line. Otherwise, we have no chance. We don't deserve it. But Christ makes it possible when he does so on the cross. So, if we are to humbly serve one another, we need to make sure we have with us Christ's attitude. Because if we don't, we won't be able to. We see in verses 9 to 11 that Christ humbled himself and therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus one day every tongue will confess, every knee will bow that he is Lord. And it's the pattern to follow. Christ warns us in the, in the New Testament, in the, in, the, in the Gospels, that those who exalt themselves will be humbled. If we don't humble ourselves, we will be exalting ourselves. And Christ's attitude is to be humble, to put others first. So as we conclude this part of the service, let's think how we at Holy Trinity, whether we're the youngest or the oldest, can make sure we remember to have Christ's attitude with us. Because imagine if 200 or 150 of us this morning all do this. It'll be awesome, won't it? Can you imagine what the outside afterwards will feel like? How are you doing, James? How are you doing, Winner? Can I encourage us to, as we prepare to do that, put the mindset of Christ on and to remember what he has done for us so that we might humbly serve one another? Let me pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for Jesus, that picture of humility and servant-heartedness and costly sacrifice. We thank you that he is the one to follow. We pray that you'd help us to make sure today and every day we take his attitude with us, that we might encourage one another so that we might stand firm together in the faith. In Jesus' name, amen.